My guest tonight co-starred in the movie Mean Girls and on such TV shows as Freaks and Geeks, Party Down, and Masters of Sex. Uh, she was also amazing uh, as Annie Wilkes in season two of Hulu's Castle Rock. Please welcome uh, our good friend, Lizzie Kaplan. Lizzie, thank you for doing this. This is really nice of you. No problem. I had literally nothing else to do. Oh, that's right. You're in quarantine. Right. And for some reason, um, are you in a stand-up comedy club? Where is this brick wall coming from? Is this your apartment? Bunker. Bunker, very nice. <laughs> You're not in a bunker? That's what bunkers are for. <laughs> I blew it. I you know, mean, yeah. I've known you for years and you've always said, I've got to go, I'm working on my quarantine bunker. And I always thought, Lizzie, what? I don't think that's going to be a problem. Who's Look laughing now? You did it. You did it. Congratulations. It looks beautiful. Brick by brick, I built this. It's gorgeous. It's Thank absolutely you so gorgeous. Much. Let me explain to everyone who's watching right now that you are in London. And so, um, and I want to make that very clear because Thank just you. before we started, I forgot for a second that you were in London and you're in a completely different time zone. It's evening where you are. Just before we started, I saw you take a, a nice sip of some white wine and I thought, oh, wait a minute, it's 9.20 in the morning. That's not good. And then I realized, no, what you're doing is fine. The fact that I just had some white wine at 9.30 in the morning is a problem. So I'm glad. I think all bets are off at this point. It's forgive yourself. Do whatever you need to do to get by. And for the record, it's, it's actually an orange wine. Much bougier. What's oh, that? It, it's fantastic. Oh, my God. It looks uh, very sophisticated. Thank you. It's urine. It's it's urine from the bunker. <laughs> okay. So you're in a bunker and you're drinking your urine. That's yeah. what a great, what a lovely way to start the interview. Can I just ask you very quickly? I'm just curious. I'm experiencing this uh, in Los Angeles. So I have some sense of, I mean, every, there's so many different experiences in America, but I have this feeling that Right now in England, they have that famous stiff upper lip. Do you think that's, is that true or is that just a cliche? I feel like it'd be much, you guys would be handling it like it's the blitz. Oh, it's oh, nothing. We'll get through this and people are walking around with umbrellas and not caring. Yeah, it's, uh, it served them, the English people, very well during the blitz and kind of throughout history. I actually have a lot of respect for the stiff upper lip, but no, it feels a bit like, back home, I assume. Most of us are doing what we're supposed to do, and then there's like a handful of dickheads that feel like they really need to get out to the park and drink in public. And, and, and cough a lot and people. All, the yeah. ones that are outside without a mask, yeah. always coughing. Yes, yeah. yeah. It's now, crazy. We're, we're having that too here in LA. They just opened, they're like, they, they didn't even open the beaches and people just decided, Tens of thousands of people said, yeah, this isn't cool anymore. It was kind of cool to be in quarantine for a bit, but I'm bored with it now. We're all going to the beach and we're gonna lick each other. I know, I know. It's really, it's, it makes me very mad. I've become, I'm definitely like following the rules in a really hardcore way, which is kind of a new thing for me, but I don't wanna do this for two years. So just don't go to the beach. Like, it's not that bad. If you're not a health worker or an essential worker of any kind, like, it's not that bad. Just stay in your house, watch TV, or else we're gonna be doing this forever. Yeah. By the way, I consider myself an essential worker. I do too. You know, I mean, they say comedy is the best medicine. I've seen no proof of that. It's actually, <laughs> it's a terrible medicine. <laughs> How are you handling? You know, first of all, I want to also mention, uh, give people a little peek behind the scenes. I was in London on business not that long ago before this pandemic hit. And uh, you and your husband, Tom, and I got together. We met in a pub. And it was a great, I had, I had a great time. It was really fun. It was fun. so fun. It was yeah. really fun. And the, the highlight was... Um, you ordered something called a scotch egg. And so we're sitting in a pub and we all have our beers. I had a Guinness because I was like, I'm going to have a Guinness and put some hair on my chest again. And 
you ordered a scotch egg, which sounded like the most disgusting thing in the world, and then actually looked amazing. Oh, now you say it looked amazing. You talked so much trash about that scotch egg when it was in front of you. You wouldn't touch it. You wouldn't even look at it. Because it sounded, it's an egg. Well, you tell us what it is. It's an egg. It's like a Russian nesting doll of a snack. So it's an egg surrounded by ground up sausage meat or sausage mince, as we say here in England, uh -huh. and then breaded and then deep fried. It's a perfect snack. Incredible. So the British are geniuses or the, I don't know if it's the Scottish or whoever, they'll take an egg, something that already is high in cholesterol, and then they'll add sausage to it and then they'll deep fry it. Delicious. Protein bomb. They're geniuses. All right. Also, it's worth mentioning that I was very impressed by, I, I appreciate how you said you had a Guinness, but the sheer volume of Guinness that you took down that afternoon was something it, to behold. It has no effect on me. It goes straight to my hair and my feet. Uh, I think I was steady as a rock when our time- You were. Was you weren't yeah. sloppy. Nope, nope, I don't get sloppy. Uh, beer to me isn't even, I mean, Guinness is not alcohol to me. It's pumpernickel bread <laughs> that somebody put into a blender and then left in the sun for like a year. That's what we it is. I'll know how much yeah. you love that pumpernickel bread. Can't get enough. So I'm curious, how are you day to day handling this? Uh, pandemic, this quarantine. Are you going crazy? No, not even close. I mean, obviously, it, it's worth mentioning that this is, it's a very weird time with so much worry. If you let yourself really worry about right. your loved ones and the state of the world in the future, then it's very, very overwhelming. But as far as like my little slice of quarantine, it's totally fine. I enjoy my husband. I get a kick out of him. We don't have kids, so we don't have to like educate them or clean them <laughs> off or whatever people, whatever Excuse people me, this, is a, this is a great time to not have kids. <laughs> it's ideal, ideal. Again, who's laughing now? Exactly. <laughs> so like, it's, it's really not, it's not terrible. I kind of also feel like I've been kinda like training for this my whole life. Yeah. Yeah, I'm naturally quite lazy. Yeah. So it's, but normally like when this isn't a global pandemic, if I have a lazy day, I work hard and then I'm very lazy when I'm not working. And I find that when I have like a normal, lazy, no pandemic day, it's coupled with this like horrific inner monologue that I need to be doing more and accomplishing more and I'm a loser and I wasted the day and tomorrow's gonna be different. And now I have an even lazier day and it's just gone. Gone. I'm like, radical yeah. self-acceptance. Anything goes. Now, this is going to sound like a creepy question, but what are you wearing? That's what I like to... Uh, what am I wearing like day to day? In yeah, day to day. I'm, I'm not doing that. I know I text you sometimes and say, what are you wearing? That's a different whole thing. Often. It's whatever. Yeah. Not, not to be discussed. Uh, <laughs> uh, not to be discussed on air. But sure. what are you... Like, are you someone that gets dressed up? I have found, I'd make an attempt every now and then to put on, like to dress like I've got to go out in the world, but then I don't go out in the world. I try that, but then I fall right back to elastic waistbands. Yeah. Uh, T-shirts for late seven. Sun, by the way. Yes. Uh, the, yes, I wear, I feel like I'm in um, like a sci-fi space movie is my favorite part of the day because I take off my sweatsuit, I take a shower, and then I put on a clean sweatsuit. And that's like the beginning of every sci-fi space movie. And then they like go and do their rounds. Yeah. And, and then they realize the computer is smarter than they are and is taking away their oxygen. Totally. Yeah. Before everything goes wrong, they're just putting on their sweatsuits and walking around the spaceship. Are you learning anything? Like I'm learning things about my neighbors because oh. I'm, I'm usually gone during the day, but now I'm learning, you know, uh, I can hear people talking. I, I sometimes witness things. Are you experiencing that at all? Yes, definitely. My, I, I definitely think that I've become, you know how every neighborhood has like a creepy woman that just stares out the window all day? Mm -hmm. I think I'm her. <laughs> You've become her. Yeah, I have. What are you, what are you seeing? Anything good? Yeah, oh, yeah. My favorite 
my favorite show currently is looking out the window across the street and there's this, I haven't actually seen the neighbor. Her name is Celia. I know this because there's another young woman that comes by about once a week to scream at Celia, get out of the house, I'm gonna kick your ass, get out, Celia. And it goes on, I mean, for like 45 minutes. She's yelling, know, Celia, Celia, come out of the house? Celia! And I mean, like, the vocal work is impressive. She screams, it's so loud. And then she'll like say her piece and storm off and then she'll come back because she remembered another thing. I don't know what it's about, I know it began because the girl was pissed about something Celia did to her mother. Because the episode one was like, yeah, it's my mother, Celia, you come out here. And it goes on, I love it, I'm riveted. And it's weird because I, I'm genuinely like, I don't like to see people fight, I don't, I don't love violence, but it's gotten to a point where all I want is for Celia to come out of the house and for them to fight each other in the street. You're invested in this drama. You've put in the time, and now we need to get to like the big act two moment where we finally <laughs> see Celia. Now, I have a theory. I yeah. have a theory, because this is where my mind goes. The woman on the street murdered Celia Ooh. a while ago. Hear me out. Okay. To cover up for it, she goes, and the body's up there. To cover up for it, she goes every day, knowing that you're watching to say, Celia, come out. Why won't you come out? That's her alibi. You are her alibi. And I would testify that Celia is definitely in there. Up until yes. this point where you educated me on the facts, I would have absolutely stood in front of a judge and said, there's no chance Celia is not in there. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you. Or she is in there, but she's in the wall. Right. This is she's a murder case. Yeah. You should call the police immediately before uh, the woman on the street sees this and then comes after you. That's where the movie goes next. I think that's a great idea. I'm gonna start calling the police every hour. I feel <laughs> like they don't have better things to do right now, just to check it out. <laughs> and I'll tell them that this was all your idea. Right. Is this the best lighting that has been on the, this show? You have, <laughs> let me tell you something, you have great lighting right now. But my ear is, is glowing. No, but it, it, it's sort of, um, it's like one of those Dutch paintings from the 17th century where Just like that. there's gentle light coming across your face, very beautiful. And then this, yeah, the ear is a little hot, <laughs> but it almost looks like that's where the spirit of God is coming in, you know? All oh, right, and the Dutch painters, they love to play with light. Yeah, so there you go. I, mean, I think, it, you know, no complaint. And I love the, uh, I love the electrical pipe that's running down the side. Thank you. I shimmy up this to get above ground. <laughs> I should show you my gun rack. Uh, oh, okay. Well, we'll see that in a minute. And your yeah. canned peas that you have by the million. Yes, I've stolen all my neighbor's food. <laughs> I've taken it all. Because one thing I didn't do was pack the bunker with food. So I've just <laughs> stolen it all. You've got a lot of guns and no food. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, how's your family doing? How's, I mean, are you keeping in touch with them? Yes. Don't you find you've, they're like talking so much more to family yeah. now? That's what yes. I find. Yes. Yeah, everybody's healthy, everybody's fine. My father definitely thinks that this whole thing is happening more to him than to anybody else in the world. Right. It's harmless for him, even though he's fine. He's just bored. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's a joy to hear those daily complaints. And, uh, but yeah, he's fine. And then I like juxtapose that with my mother-in-law here in, this is fucked. Here in uh, England. Right. And she's actually handling it really beautifully. She's like taking a moment to just absorb this slowing pace. And she sends very long text messages to us a lot every yes. day, multiple times a day, saying, like, I was in the garden and normally I would get a weed and feed treatment, but. I find with all this extra time, I've been hand weeding the garden. It took me back to being a girl, watching my mum with a very sharp knife, taking out all the weeds. Maybe this is a time for us all to slow down. I love my children so much. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> That's something you would read on the back of like a tea bag, you know, a, yeah. a really good British tea, you know? Very inspiring. She's killing it. 
See, I told you the British, I think are, they've been through a lot and they're, they're, I think they're, uh, you know, very adept at this kind of thing. They know what they're I doing. I agree. I mean, the Blitz really was no joke. And a lot no. of them went through that. Um, would you like to talk more about the Blitz or? Well, I would, but I'm reading a book right now by Eric Larson that I, that I recommend. Um, I know that my producer is going to cut this part out whenever I try to show that I do like to read a book. But um, <laughs> just for you personally, uh, Eric Larson, uh, The Splendid and the Vile. The Splendid and the Vile. The Splendid and the Vile by, he's one of my favorite writers and uh, he's written this book and it is absolutely like, you won't want to put it down. You'll want it, you'll want it to keep going. It's just gorgeous. It's gorgeous okay. and it's just about one year from when he becomes prime minister to pretty much the end of the worst of the blitz, so. I will read that. I do find all of that stuff pretty fascinating. Although I do think that it's kind of hard to read a book these days, which is weird because you would think it would be, I mean, it doesn't sound like it is for you, but I'm finding it very hard to concentrate on things that aren't. Yeah. Really yeah. Don't read Camus' The Plague. <laughs> yeah, I will not. I will not. I've, I've read some excerpts. That was enough. That yeah, did that it. was enough. Are we going to talk about your dog? Now, you said, uh, you, you, you act like it's very carefree, you and your husband, no kids, but you do have a dog to take care of. It's true. A, a and dog that's getting fatter by the minute. What's your dog's name? Her name is Buns. Buns, okay. Buns. And, uh, is Buns distracting you at all during this time of, of, of woe? Uh, she is obviously an angel dog. Um, she's perfect in every way. She is really acclimated to this new life where she doesn't go out as much and walk as much. And, uh, since I have no acting thing to promote, uh, pretty much the most exciting thing that happened this week was I, I put a rice cake on, on Buns's head and I realized she looked exactly like the character Yonki from the show Unorthodox. <laughs> I saw this. Here, here is Buns with the rice cake on his head. And then her head. Her, her head. Sorry. Here's the side by side with Yankee, and this is impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look. He's always eating a rice cake, which really ties the two images together. That is quite honestly the most exciting thing that has happened in this house. You know, you know what I've loved? I've, I love that. Over, uh, over the years, I've interviewed you for all these really big movies, shows, and you've always got this big thing to promote. And I love that this is a special time we're in where it's, okay, Lizzie, let's get to the promotion. You're like, all right, <laughs> my dog Buns looks like Yankee from the show Unorthodox with a rice yeah. cake on his head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is shocking because only when you put the rice cake on her head does she look like Yankee. When you take it off, she looks like... Gigi Hadid. Yeah, I know. But I, I just love, I just, just, it's a very special time. We're never going to get to do that again, <laughs> where I, where I end a segment by, <laughs> by saying, make sure you check out Lizzie's dog Buns with a rice cake on her head as Yankee from Unorthodox. <laughs> what is okay, the well, point of even making movies when you have content like this? Don't you think? I, this is going to stick in my mind. You know? I mean, I think it might have to stick in my mind for at least a long while. Now, I have a question. I've talked, I'm going to be honest with you. I've talked to some people that look absolutely, uh, they look absolutely dreadful. Uh, the guys are really letting themselves go uh, yeah. in general. Um, the women are doing a, a much better job. You look fantastic. What are you doing to take care of yourself? I mean, it, I'm talking about like self-care, you know, moisturizing, doing things at home now that uh, we can't go out. You, you can't- Yes, uh, because moisturizing is obviously something reserved only for a pandemic. <laughs> why, would you, why would you waste, why would you waste I, your lotions in the I real haven't, world? I haven't moisturized once in my life until I went into quarantine and then that's all I've done. I'm just- that's, can't be true. Your skin is like the skin of a young baby. <laughs> well, thank yeah, you. So other than the, you know, sleeping 10 hours a night, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I haven't been, I haven't been doing my, I really need a haircut. Um, I really need a haircut. See, Ever. I didn't, I didn't think, wait, what was this? What was that? Nothing. Right. Nothing. Okay. Gross. Gross. Okay. Um, okay, I'm gonna have the editors look back at that. So you, um, 
Wait, you looked fine until you started to push it forward. Well, I had bangs, see, before this started, and now they've clearly grown out. And uh, Tom, my husband, is too scared to cut them because he's afraid that I'll get mad at him. So then I thought, hey, Conan seems to know a lot about hair. No. <laughs> Maybe he could help me out with cutting my, I mean, really, I feel like you probably think more about hair than the, than the average Joe. I think more about hair than the average hair stylist. Uh, lots of work has gone into this over the years. Um, well, it's your trademark. That means automatically. Like there's, I'm trying to think who I would trust you, Kate Middleton, Timothee Chalamet. Those are the three. Yes. Because all Chalamet. primarily known for their beautiful hair. Yes, uh, thank you. It's nice to be in that elite group. <laughs> By the way, the only way I can make my daughter laugh now is when we watch a movie with Timothee Chalamet. Whenever he walks on screen, I go, Chalamet. And she laughs. That's the only thing I've ever done that she finds funny. I um, hope you sent him a thank you note for that. Your <laughs> yeah. daughter loves you once more. Don't, don't. I don't think you should be messing with your hair. Your hair looks- Listen, Conan, I just think, like, I'm not going back to work anytime soon. We have at least a couple months. <laughs> I would like to have a cute fringe, as they say over here. Uh -huh. And I would like you to help me, help me do it. Okay, how would I do that? Would you have any instruments with you? Do you have clippers? Do you have... Clippers? Yeah, what just you... giant hedge clippers. You could get it clippers? in one. You would you never use. One chop. No, clippers makes me a little nervous. Okay. That's for a, a short, a man's hair or a short haircut doesn't yeah. have to be a man. But no, I have. Um, Tom made this this charity thing, this beautiful rainbow. Oh, that's and nice. So I have these scissors. Like really, they were truly just right here on this rainbow. They're obviously for paper. I don't think they're for hair, but they seem fairly sturdy. And I trust you. Uh, I'm gonna say, I've done some scary things in my career. I've never been more frightened. You're a very uh, attractive woman, and the idea of me over a Zoom line here in LA cutting your hair with not even the right scissors uh, is is horrifying to me. I don't want the wanna... right scissors make it less horrifying. I no, don't. there's no way it would be less horrifying. Uh... It's just hair, Conan. It'll grow back. <laughs> I mean, okay. I think these are layers. I'll, I think you have to keep it that way, right there, and then do it. Like this? Well, well, hold on. If you want the right, you have okay, to pull sorry, it forward. Yeah. Pull it like, keep it like that, and then you have to do, but you have one strand that's much longer than the other. Okay, okay. It's a layer. Okay. I can't so, see. I'll get rid of it. We're gonna layer it. We're gonna layer it. We're gonna do, see that strand right there? Yeah. Just cut a little off of that strand. Okay, like where? Uh, that's good. <laughs> Here? This yeah. is not even the hard part. Here? Go like ahead. That? Yep. No, no, right there. Just cut that off. Okay. Then mail that to me and don't <laughs> ask why. <laughs> that okay, is not take... a bangs trim. Hold on. You want the bangs trim? You want the straight across? You're not That's what I'm here it. for. Are you willing to take that whole chunk off right there if you pull it down? Right now, no bangs. I would like to have my bangs back. And I'm okay. <laughs> All right. So pull it down past there. And how high do you want the? Oh my God! This is nerve wracking. This is like talking someone down who's piloting a 747. <laughs> That's what it feels like to me right now. I okay. So go. I'm supposed to do something up here, but I don't know what. So let's just keep going. We're not going to worry about that. All right. Hold that right there. Now, <laughs> do you want it to be right around where your brows are? I mean, what? sure. If it gets a little shorter, I don't mind a baby bang. Okay, let's do this. You can always take off more, but you can never add. Someone told me Looking that. Looking like a true haircutting pro. So start there and just take off, bring your hand down right to about there. And just take off from, go up a little further and from there up. There? Oh, oh God, this scares me so much. Yeah, go. It's not working, is it? Yeah, Oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh God, oh, that's a lot so of hair. Much hair. Conan, it's not bad. You know what, I have to say something that is not bad. 
It is not, I mean, it's, and yeah, well, yeah, because I'm, okay, you'd have to go straight across, please close okay. your eyes. No, 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 that's what you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna look like Mo from the Three Stooges. <laughs> also, who cares? Stakes couldn't be lower. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> this pandemic could end tomorrow and they could say, hey, we want you to play Rapunzel in the big <laughs> Disney remake. <laughs> and they, they say, I would, but Conan cut my hair from 10,000 miles away. Well, you'll cut me a check. Okay. Right. Fair enough. A little so more? That, I mean, the, it's, it's... It's a little low over the right eye. Over here. It's so a like little... Here. No, 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 it's too, that's too much. Lower. There you go. Right around there, I think. Go. There's going to be go. a lot of hair in the house. Go. Oh, God. <laughs> This is nice. Okay. Like Will Ferrell in uh, Zoolander. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you do look like Will Ferrell in Zoolander. That was... Thank you. Thank you. Well, <laughs> you always have. That's a hole. Um, yeah, that's, you know what you need to do? You get, get some shoe polish. Yeah, Just cool. cover in that part. <laughs> this is, thank you. <laughs> Are you I... sure this is, this is everything you can do? I mean, there's got, I feel like they're still too long. Okay, a little more of the eyes. Just a little more. Just a little more. This is killing me. Like here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah. Uh, Wait, I think that really messed, maybe messed it up. <laughs> no, it's, Actually. It, see? There's just a little part that comes down right on the bridge of your nose. It comes down a little far. Oh, uh, yeah, oh, uh, yeah. I don't want to cut my eyebrows. There's hair in my eyes. Lots of it. Now I'm really blind. How does it look? <laughs> you know what? It looks good. It looks good. I'm, it's, look, <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I think you look amazing. If you go into a professional stylist right now, yeah, allowed to, they would say, who did this to you? And there'd be a warrant out for me. That looks amazing. It's like, Audrey Hepburn hair. <laughs> yes, no, I'm gonna say it's Roman Holiday. You look like like Audrey Hepburn in Roman Holiday. You look you look gorgeous. This is my favorite haircut I've ever had. Now let's do you. Yeah, isn't that funny? There's no uh, no <laughs> tools around here. I could uh -huh. just comb mine down. You know, mine's you getting long on, on top. Hey, you need a little trim. I know, I know, I need a little trim, but I got I got nothing here. Look at this. Oh yes, I need that. I want to. <laughs> yeah, I'll send it all. I, I'll send a whole a whole envelope. Yeah, that looks. <laughs> I'm a kid that would come and ask you for a date who has no shot. <laughs> Is Lizzie here? <laughs> Is Lizzie Kaplan here? We have um, just tell her Conan called and he ca called came by, <laughs> and I just was wondering if maybe she wanted to go get him malted. Is that a guy? That's a guy. A that's a guy that existed before either one of us was dating age. I like yeah. that guy. We yeah. also sort of had a similar haircut. I'm not kidding. I like it. I think it's really good. I think I just saved your life and your career. Thank you no, no. so much. I'm telling you, people are going to see this, and there are going to be these big deal producers see that see this and go, that's the look. We <laughs> always thought of Lizzie as having that kind of hair, but now she's got this hair, and that's perfect. You've opened up so many doors for me today. Um, now, for the first time since this all happened, I'm looking forward to life after the pandemic. All right, well, I hope people out there like it because uh, people really do love you. And uh, if they don't like what has happened here, they're going to hate my guts. I'm telling you, I thought this was gonna, when I thought maybe Conan should help me with my hair, I thought it was gonna go really bad. And uh, as it turns out, Beautiful. Yeah, well, you know me, good at everything. <laughs> I mean, must get exhausting. <laughs> so here's, I'm gonna, we're gonna, I, I'm gonna make sure that before we go, I promote once again, because- Please, yes. Let's get the word out that when Buns has a rice cake on her head, That's looks right. like Yonki from, uh, from Unorthodox. Yes. And that's make the project. Make sure that you tweet about that, tell your friends, also, and I'd like to promote, this is called the Conan, what you're wearing right now. 
It's the new style. It's all the rage in London. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to get written up in all the London papers. You um, really are all the hair periodicals <laughs> you've been trying to get in on for all these years. It's really, I mean, it probably would have been funnier if it didn't turn out that well. But No, no, no. Uh, I like that it turned out well. I, I seriously would not, I would be very upset if I marred you in any way. So, uh, so that would upset me deeply and not That's be worth whatever comedy gold there was to be mined. Um, well, I don't think it should upset you that much, Conan. It's a little weird. I'm a weird guy. Should we yeah. uh, cut off the rest? Ah, that scares me. Look, no. that's, for your, that's for your husband. I want him to be present when that happens. Yes. Yes, I'd like <laughs> to share all the most important moments of my life with both you and my husband. So this is perfect. You know what? Uh, it has been an absolute delight talking to you. Uh, as you know, I'm a huge fan of yours. And uh, I, I love it when we get to just bump into each other occasionally. But today when I found out, Yes, you're going to get to talk to Lizzie Kaplan in London. That made my day. You're saving me in quarantine. So thank you very, very much. That's very nice. Thanks, Conan. Yeah. Back at you in a big way. Such yeah. a pleasure to see you. I'm glad that you are alive. That's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. Keep it up. <laughs>